Hello everyone and welcome back to making the XB70 Valkyrie for a game like Kerbal Space Program and this video we're going to talk about how to texture it. Now texturing a plane is a little bit different from other things that you might want to texture and that's mainly because we've got certain definite text and we really want the texture to have in some cases if you really want to go into great detail and make it really look good a specific bolts even right I mean uh, the texture has to look right it has, it's not a repeating texture, it has certain things in certain places and it needs those things in those places, right? So we can't just do a random UV unwrap and do a repeating texture, you know, a seamless texture file like a lot of other textures might have. And so to a large extent we do project from view and I'll show you that in a moment. Uh, there are other ways of doing things like texture painting but again, because we want certain texts like the US Air Force text and the logo, the roundel, and the serial numbers and such in particular places, this isn't as useful. And for purposes of a game, we can't really do the whole using Blender shaders. If you were just trying to uh, render this for an image in Blender, then of course you could use the built-in shaders to make it really look spiffy. And it would have a very nice sort of metallic texture to it that's white obviously not black uh, but uh, yeah uh, that would be a different thing to do but we don't need to do that because Kerbal Space Program in particular has its own shaders we can't use Blender's shaders to do things for it so we are going to need a texture file and first I've prepared this body actually we're gonna do two texture files we're gonna do one for the body and the engine to sell down here and also a little fairing bit there and the one down there and then we're going to have a separate one for the wings and the vertical stabilizer and canard and that's just how I've decided to arrange it because well if you take a look at the wing it certainly looks large enough to warrant its own um, what you got texture file and I think uh, trying to squeeze it on with the body is probably not the best thing for if you want some sort of high quality. That said, what I've got prepared is a 2048 by 2048 pixel file. So uh, you'll want to create a new, whatever program you use, 2048, 2048. So there's a 2K texture. And uh, I've gone with background contents white since the XB70 is white. If you've got a black plane, that's probably a little bit more complicated because you're going to need to see... Uh, how it's being unwrapped, how it's being mapped, right? This is all, uh, when we say unwrapping, it means it's basically mapping. This is a 3D object. We need to put it into a 2D format. It's just like a map of the globe, right? And that means we need to figure out how best to do that to avoid certain parts being stretched. Our text would look bad, you know, like the US Air Force text would look really bad if it's not placed on the surface, you know, evenly. And so a lot of what we're interested in is making sure that that doesn't have problems. Now, you'll be able to select specific um, faces to texture at once. So if it turns out that, you know, you, you see some stretching on certain faces, well, you can do those separately. And uh, the canopy is a good example. So I said we're going to project from view. Well, the side view is great until you get to the stuff on top like the can uh, the windshield and stuff like that so we'll do those separately okay and another thing I need to mention is that I've applied the mirroring on the body so all we've got now is edge split and the reason you need to apply the mirroring on the body is because if you try and put text on one side and you've got mirroring on it'll appear reversed on the opposite side so we need to do the text on the on each side separately and so we're gonna unwrap both sides separately okay so I've got this line here that's just for my own reference I want to put the body parts down here and the engine nacelle parts up there and so that's what I've got and to use that texture file that I prepared as a PNG uh, you have to click base color image texture and open and then of course uh, XB70 body is what we want okay so now it's prepared there and this is the only material we have on anything right now and you see I've test unwrapped I tried to do this a few times already I did put the yeah I, I I've wait a second I thought I'd sealed that up okay yeah I've, I've 
tried to record this a few times already, but I keep finding stuff like the end of that not being filled up, for instance. Or, oh, is it's is that face reversed? Is that what's going on? Let me see. Um, we don't want knife. What is up with this face? So one thing that can happen is the normal can be, well, there's a face there and it's poking out. So it's normal is in the correct direction. So, okay, I don't know why it looks empty here. <laughs> I don't. Uh, so uh, we'll just pass on that little bit of information and we'll continue with what we need to do. So I, tr I tried recording this before and that's why we've got something, but we'll, we'll try again. We're going to try this a little bit better. So as you can see, I wanted to do the four parts and this is all messed up right now. Uh, do the forward parts first and then do the back parts separately because the back is more flat and so I want to project from the top view instead of the side view. So what we're going to do is we're going to select faces and we're going to just select the side faces for now. And we're going to go back to this point here, not those. Okay, but we have to make sure that we select everything on this side of this line. So we need this little guy here. If it turns out that the top of your body involves a lot of detail, you're going to need to do these top surfaces separately. We'll do these window surfaces separately as well. Okay, do I really have everything? I'm going to zoom in. Yep, oh, see, uh, right here on the nose. The nose has always been a problem. Okay, hopefully that's all of it. Now again, we're going to go to the side view. And we're going to say U. Press U and go project from view. Now we've got that. Now we've got a whole lot of other mess. So I'm going to go control I and I'm going to press G and I've got to just move that off to the side for now. Control I selects the inverse of what you've got. So we only want this bit. I'm going to press G and it's important to have this little thing selected, UV sync selection. Keep the UV, this mode and this edit mode in sync. That's all that does. So when you select something in here, it selects it in here too and vice versa. So G and S I'm going to make it stretch from one side to another this time and that'll help with sizing things. So we could just press 9 from this view, keypad 9, and Alt A to deselect and then let's select these. Now I don't want to get the very tip of this, oops, sorry, and that's because we already have that as part of that bit down there. Okay, it seems like we've got all these bits now. So I'm going to go back to the side view and I'm going to select uh, and just double checking that we don't already have uh, it unwrapped on this part. And I'm going to press U, project from view, G to move it, S to size it, and we want it to stretch from one side to another. So each object will have to be unwrapped separately. And that's because you'll note that the unwrapping is being done in edit mode. And edit mode, you can only look at one object at a time. So we're going to have to save the unwrapping and do that for each of the objects. So I've selected all of this bit, and this is the entire front bit. And then in this view, I'm going to go control I. That selects everything else, everything that we haven't unwrapped before and we're going to unwrap from the top view now because this uh, seems to have more dimension in that view. Press U, project from view. We have some other tiny bits and what those are are actually the upper surfaces of the little doodads, the antennae and all that stuff that we had and uh, the bottom surfaces, which is fine. We just want those to be white. Okay, so here we can move with G, we can press R to rotate, so I'm going to rotate like this, and we want the little doodad bits, so I'm going to go control A, I want these little doodad bits, press G, we're going to just move them over here for now, 
they just need to be white so it doesn't matter where they are uh, all, as long whoops as long as they are on the texture alt a to deselect and then select this top stuff G and then we can size that up and again if you wanted some more detail on these panels because now we're projecting from the top there but that means that these might get stretched I'm planning to just leave them white so I'm not bothered but if you want more detail on those panels you could just select them individually and then unwrap them separately okay and um, the, the canopy so from top view I call it the canopy but it's just the windshield uh, we're selecting faces and I'm just gonna shift click these faces to separate them and press U project from view and there we have those so that's there okay and that should be the whole body there's nothing else left we made sure of that by doing selecting inverse and so we got all the little bits now there is the little fairing that I hid and so I'm gonna hide well, I'm just going to go into object mode, which again, now that all that disappears, so this is a, a bit of a problem. And we need to see the fairing. And right now it's just being unwrapped like a cube, which is not too bad. And But really, only the only visible portion of it is on the sides. So I'm going to get it from side view. I'm going to press A to select all, U, project from view, and basically that's all I want. So we'll dump that up front where there should be some space. Okay, uh, the gear fairing I'll put with the engine nacelles. So next, above the line, we're going to do the engine nacelles. Okay, so there are a few views that we need to worry about. And uh, for this, maybe we don't need to worry about mirroring. Let me take a look at an image of the XB70. Um, the question is, is there some text on that part of the body? It seems to me that there's not a whole lot. Right now the wings are covering that little bit. But I think there's not a whole lot that's going on there. Okay, so as we can see, there's just not much going on there. So if we mirror it, we're not going to have any problems with text like we have up here, up front here. So yeah we'll just keep the mirroring on and that'll simplify things so that being said we'll just project from this view here we're going to select all the stuff that we can see from this view that front panel probably doesn't matter that one i don't want okay uh we can do that front panel separately all right so making sure we're in the orthographic view press u project from view and we've got that then I'm going to do control I and select everything else and from the bottom view press U project from view and we've got that and I'm going to press R to rotate S to scale and we can get it to same same size as the other part so that if we run stripes across, we can see where the stripes are going, right? You can do it more precisely. I'll just do it uh, to this level for now. And uh, there was this one face in here that I, because that's, that's not good to have it from this view. Actually, the view that we want that from, assuming we do anything with it except for just make it white, is front view. So project from view, and I'm just going to set that off to the side there okay gear fairing and side view we have some surfaces here let's just select actually we can just select these that's just three view project from view now when you apply stuff like beveling or other modifiers it'll just go along with whatever texturing you've already done most of the time so it'll be fine because we have beveling here that will add extra polygons but those polygons will just share what they've their neighbors more or less so we've taken up this space here with this fairing bit and the top polygons we don't really care about one that we have missed is 
well, a lot that we've missed is the stuff in the back. Uh, these guys are probably the top surfaces. Yep. Well, I'll just uh, give them the same stuff as the bottom surfaces. We're never, we're never going to see them anyway, so that'll be good enough for those. Okay. Well, we've got some space left, so that's taking up the top bit. And if we go back to the engine nacelle, important not to have them overlap, of course. Otherwise, that's going to be awkward. That's the engine nacelle. And I'll do the horizontal stabilizer as well with this. Now, horizontal stabilizer, we've got mirroring on. And that's fine. I, there's no text on it. And so we're just going to project from view like this. You project from view. And we're just going to plop it there. I don't anticipate any detailed markings this time. And so that should be fine. OK, so now's the annoying bit. <laughs> um, the horizontal stabilizer, the reason why I didn't want to do it with everything else is because it's going to become its own file. So um, we're going to do UV, uh, export UV layout. And I'm going to go gonna make sure that we got proper names for all this stuff. Uh, so XB70, instead of body, I'm going to put um, HS for horizontal stabilizer and export that. So this is what it ends up as. But again, when we have different objects, we can't do them all at once. At least I don't know of a way. I looked online and I didn't see any way of doing it all at once. So that's annoying. And to that end, we're going to now merge a bunch of objects. The engine nacelle, I'm going to apply the mirroring. And you should definitely save before doing this. Here, I'm going to apply the beveling. I'm going to select these two, select the engine nacelle, select the body, uh, and then control J to join them. Now they're all one bit. And so when I do tab, I see all the stuff. And it's all good, so that's fine. UV, export UV layout. And this time it's just XB70 body. So we've got this file, and then we've got this file. And they are transparent, obviously. And we've got the actual, oh, there's a hint for you as where this is going to go. We've got this body thing. We don't really need the center line anymore. So yeah, um, I wonder if I could just undo that. OK. And I'm going to copy this bunch over to this. And I'm going to copy this over to this. Ah, notice how it went in the middle. Now that's not going to preserve its location and this might not have preserved its location either. So what I often do is layer new uh, layer and I paint it white. Okay, so now we've got this and now I'm going to layer, Let, let's do it with the um, horizontal stabilizer. Bottom. Okay. So layer, I don't know if I, I probably do need to, well, let's see. If I just copy this layer right now, it goes into the wrong place. But if I merge the visible layers, there might be another way of doing this. Then I can do that. And then this, I'm going to merge visible layers, copy it, and then it'll preserve the location of everything. But we've lost that a little bit there, so I'm just going to take this and delete. OK. So now we have a thing. OK. And these are in the background. I'm going to create a new layer on the top of them, because we're eventually going to hide them. And now we get to put on our markings. Now, this top layer is going to be completely white because that's the body of the XB70 in a nutshell. So let's make sure that's there. 
and paint white. But for the time being, we want the opacity lower so that we can see what's going on behind it. And so there are numerous ways of getting the particular markings that you need. Uh, the roundel for the USAF is pretty simple. You can get that off of Wikipedia and you can use image references to figure out exactly where to put that. So that's the thing. But if you have very special markings you want, one technique is to just type in, if you're not using, if this is not for commercial purposes, uh, just type in like XB70 decals because most of these planes have been uh, model aircraft before and we have XB70 uh, decals. Now, uh, the color on these, because this is obviously a photograph, is not great. But you can see when I get rid of the blueness that this color is blue. So I'm not gonna use this one. And I'm not gonna use most of this. Uh, what I really only want, because I've already got the roundel and that looks pretty spiffy. As far as the text, um, you can look for the proper font and the font is Amarillo USAF and we can type that on hopefully but it's tougher to imitate this NASA logo okay you yes obviously in black please and we need to not have it distorted I was using a different font before. Air Force. That looks proper, doesn't it? And it's pretty much centered on the body, taking a look at the reference image. Uh, we can see right here, pretty centered, and it's just in front, uh, just behind the back of the canard. Now we don't actually have the back of the canard, so that's a catch because I'm saving that for a Kerbal Space Program. So the roundel, another little detail is the nose and the bottom. Well, the bottom is sometimes white, um, like on this one. I'll probably keep it that way. The And this little NASA logo there too, and that's a separate thing. Um, the top part here is black. And again, we, we're on partial transparency right now. That's why it's coming out the way it is. Now the windows, the windscreen, handled separately but uh, the forward edge of the windscreen is black but these are white so we're gonna have to maintain that but because they're handled separately we can just paint on it um, we will probably want to draw a straight line at the bottom of this okay so the process continues adding details so let me just do some painting and most of it's gonna end up white and I'm not gonna do too much detailing I just want to get the US Air Force and the roundel all over the place. And um, we're going to unwrap the wing similarly, but I'll show you that part. But as far as doing the photoshopping for the details, I'm not going to show all of that, unfortunately. But you get the general picture. And so you're going to have to use a lot of reference photos to see exactly where things go. Okay, so I've made sort of a simple start to the texture and again I reloaded the image file so that I could place it. I decided to go with the diffuse shader for now uh, because basically that's what I'm going to use in Kerbal Space Program and then I'm going to put Textures Unlimited stuff on top of that. But you'll see that there's sort of a problem going on here and that's because these little gaps, maybe I should have uh, added it to the windshield texture but um, we can solve this problem in a different way. Well, actually, in a couple of different ways. Um, some more hacky dollars. And then there's the bad edge that we've got going there. So actually, I want th this part white, this part white, and then that all black. Okay, so I'm going to actually just forcibly remove them from where they need to be, uh, from where they are. So these guys are already white. It's um, this one that has a problem. So, boop. <laughs> I'm just gonna move it. And uh, these two have a problem. They're over here. Well, and that's because they were vertical surfaces. So we didn't treat them properly. And then these two, I want black. Where are they? 
those, okay, I'm just going to press G and move them into the black area. Okay, so now that's all done. Now we could clean up some of this by surreptitiously moving it as well. I really just need to draw better lines in in Photoshop, but this, this is all dusty and I don't know why. Um, you know what? Maybe texture paint would not be a bad thing. I want a nice flat black here. Is that so much to ask? I think that's just the lighting right there. Uh, to a large extent, I'm zooming in a lot and part of it is just it the way it renders. And we haven't we haven't gotten to rendering it yet, really. This is just a preview. Okay, yeah, I could go on with that, but uh, for now, this will suffice if we take a look at from a nice distant view. <laughs> if we don't zoom in too much, it's all right. Uh, the lettering on the other side is all right. Mm. Yeah, I'll do other touch-up work later. Let's focus on unwrapping the wing portion. Now, I'm planning to use a different um, file for that. So we're going to have to keep all that sorted out. So since we're going to use another texture for the wing and for all these other bits, I'm going to currently load up this wing texture, which is just a blank white one, as you can see. And right now it's going to apply that to the body, but we're not going to be too concerned with that. We'll sort that all out later. Now what we really want is to start with the big wing surfaces and work from there. And this, we have to separately load in this wing image file over here as well. Okay, there's wing left. And I'm going to unwrap it differently. So Alt-A to deselect, select all the upper surfaces. Okay, and we've got the one of the edges there. So we have to watch out because we have to decide how we want to treat these edges. I'm going to have all the edges come with the upper surface. Okay. And then uh, now there's no mirroring, so the wing right will be separate. You project from view. Okay, so that's our left wing bit. Um, do they have a way of drawing a guide here? Annotate. Annotate line, yes. Okay, and then G. And then we got to fit it into this box here. And then we'll fit the vertical stabilizers in the bottom bits. So that is the upper surface. And I'm going to get rid of the engine to sell to make sure we're not missing anything. By red, I mean hide it. Uh, so that's the bottom of this wing. Okay, so let me just get all the stuff that I properly selected and organized. Okay, so that's all that bit. Control I just like the inverse, which is the stuff that I did not properly select and organize. And I'm going to UV unwrap that just from this view. It's a line somewhere and that's no big surprise to me. It's probably like the center line or something. I wonder why it's not showing the circle for circle select right now. So this is the bottom. I'll put the bottom on the outside and put the tops on the inside. And I'll put those right there. Okay, so those are the two wings and um, we'll probably have to deal with those separately. But we've got these hinges too. And uh, actually I'm going to merge them with the wing. I think that's okay. Just press L to select the linked portions here. Uh, control I to select the other stuff. I'll just unwrap from this view. Um, so U, project from view, and there's our hinge portions. G to move it. So I'll move it to the bottom one right there. Okay, and then we can do the same for wing left. So that's the wing. And now the vertical stabilizer. Now we can rely on mirroring. Uh, for the vertical stabilizer, but we have to do each side of the vertical stabilizer separately because of the lettering for NASA. So mirroring is fine, but uh, we need to do each side of it separately. So side view, and we'll put these down here. Okay, and then, uh, select inverse, and this view, 
Well, that's pretty simple. Now, oh, we didn't do the outer wings. Shoot. Okay, I need some sort of guide to tell me where the wing left and wing right stuff is. So I'm going to draw another line here. I'm going to draw a line there. And I'm going to draw a line there. Just uh, don't cross this line boundary. There. Okay. And then the same for the wing right. I want to see where its boundary lines are. Okay, that should make things a little bit better. So, back to the outer wing. Whoa, wait, that's a lot of business. Oh, that's, uh... oh my, we can actually do that. <laughs> So I've just discovered that we can actually see everything on here at the same time. I guess exported it as a single layout. Okay. I think that didn't used to be possible, but maybe it's a 2.8 thing. Maybe it's not. Maybe it just was always like that. Okay. So let me see. Wing left, wing right, vertical stabilizer. So if I tab, okay, good. Well, that's fine. Still. Drawing in the lines is probably okay too, uh, because once we get into edit mode, it only shows us this one, so we can't uh, we can't use that to our benefit always. Well, that saves a lot of saving of the file and all. Okay, so that's about the same size. All right, so that's the outer wing, and then I'm going to object mode. We're going to get all these hinge portions. Gonna get all these hinge portions and add them to the outer wing now. Join. And I'm going to check that that doesn't bust our animation. I don't believe it should. And with that uh, done, I'm gonna select the uh, linked, press L, and then select inverse for the hinge portions. And then press U. Well, let me get the view like that. Okay, press U, project from view. And I'm just gonna dump it with the oops, dump it with the rest of the hinge portions in that block there. Okay. And so uh, there is the very front of the wing here, right? This pokey bit up front. That's this hinge front. Well, I'm going to select all, project from view. Uh, this seems to be a little bit there that wasn't supposed to come along with it. So I've made a bit of a mistake, but I'm just going to dump it in here. Okay, and that at long last should be everything. So we've hidden the body. And we can hide the horizontal stabilizer. So if we go into object mode, select everything. Oh, it is in tab mode. I don't understand. It didn't used to be able to do this, but I'm glad it does. Okay, so we've got all the bits. Okay, and so with that, I'm going to export the UV layout and see if it's, it says outer wing R, vertical stabilizer, uh, wing left and more. Okay, well, that's not really good naming. I'll just call it um, XB70 wing. We'll, we'll be fine. Hmm. Well, this is not what I was expecting. Oh, I guess I have to highlight all of it. <laughs> that's that's an odd quirk. Okay. Uh, the hinge portions here are overlapping, but I don't mind. They're going to be just white anyway. Oh, sorry, black. Those are black. Okay. Well, there we go. We've got... Uh, Good, nice layout. We don't have to copy and paste anything as it turns out. And new layer. And the first thing we want to do is just have a white layer. But we want to turn down the opacity so we can see the stuff underneath. And I'll begin placing the logos and such in what appears to be their correct location. The troublesome one will be that NASA logo. This, And um, I'm going to have to trim off that those little bits down there. Okay, 
Uh, it looks like I have a little bit of a problem with the NASA one, and that's because technically this bit actually goes onto the rudder portion of the vertical stabilizer, and I don't have that because I'm just uh, doing the vertical stabilizer portion. But then again, uh, well, the non-NASA ones don't even have that label at the top. So I'm going to have to decide whether I want to do a truncated one, another one, another one uh, in other words, one that only goes on the vertical stabilizer portion and doesn't extend to the rudder, or I just leave it off entirely. I'll think about that. It looks like the front portion here actually is also black. So I keep that in mind. In the back here, um, sometimes, I, I think only the nozzles on the engines are black here. Okay, well, I uh, did the textures, but it looks like the vertical stabilizer, I'm gonna have to apply the mirroring, mirroring and uh, do the right one separately because it's got the stuff backwards, as you can see. So, um, yeah, so I'll just do that. Uh, at a different time, but I think you've gotten the idea. Uh, this is the texturing portion. Uh, next time I'll go over bringing it into, um, and of course uh, we have to do a separate texture for the body, so that doesn't look right 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 now. But uh, next video I'll talk about bringing it into Unity and Curl Space Program. Uh, this I'll fix by applying the mirroring and then using uh, these two slots, this one right here and this one right here too. Uh, to the other vertical stabilizer but for now we'll leave it here so with this I'll say thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did enjoy this video please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time